Frank's here and it's nice to see you guys online. And we have a few announcements I'd like to give to you so that you keep, keep in touch with what's happening at ICA. First of all, our online services are now can be streamed until forever. So not only it's till 8 a.m. the next day, but as long as you could find it online, you can check it out. Prayer service is now on Zoom. Every Tuesday from 6.30 to 7.30 p.m. it will be available for you to check out. So please check our social for more details on the Zoom meeting ID. Good Friday is coming and we're going to have communion in each of our homes. So what you need to do is find your own, any type of crackers, any type of juice that you may have, and we will have communion together. Check on social for the time uh, we're going to have Good Friday together. So see you there. Do you have a prayer request? If you go to our bit.ly link at bit.ly, that is bit.ly slash ICA prayer online, you can submit your prayer request there and uh, we will be sure to pray for you when you've submitted those prayer requests. Second Corinthians 9 verse 7 says, and do not give reluctantly or responsive pressure for God loves a cheerful giver. If you want to give to your church, visit icaswi.com slash giving on details on how to give to your church today. All right, guys, that's it. Please follow us on social media through Instagram and Facebook, and we're ready for worship. So let's worship God together. Good morning, ICA. It's so good to see you again. And we want to worship together with you this morning. So let's turn our worry to worship. Let's worship God together. Let's do it.
and you're mighty to save. This is our prayer, God. This is our prayer for our nation.
and conquered the grave. Jesus conquered the grave.
never stop working. Never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. Never stop, you never stop working. Never stop, you never stop working. Lord Jesus, this morning, we just want to ask that you would help us to be focused. Lord, not on the news and the headlines, but Lord, during this time of uncertainty, I pray that you would help us to remain focused on Christ during these uncertain times. Lord, I pray for that connection that we have with you, that it would grow to a deeper level in these moments of reduced activity. Lord, we pray for protection for our families. We pray for healing for the sick. Lord, we pray provision for our work and our workers and our employment, Lord. Would you provide the finances that people are needing during this desperate time? Lord, I pray you would bless and protect and give wisdom Wisdom to service providers, grocers in Surabaya, truck drivers and warehouse workers, delivery drivers and cashiers. God, we pray for doctors and healthcare workers that God, you would both sustain them and protect them and give them wisdom as they serve our community. Lord, we pray for the healing of broken relationships. Lord, we pray for protection over marriages and families during this time of additional pressure and strain. Lord, as we are are locked in our houses together and sometimes can't get away from the person that we most struggle with. Lord, I pray for your healing in the area of relationships through this, through this time. God, we pray for your presence and the power of God to do miracles and to bring change into the lives of people behind this camera and across this great land of Indonesia and around the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We've been talking about a connection during the last couple of weeks here at ICA. Connection to God and connection to people. And today we're going to talk about the three things that God can do in our lives during times of crisis. In John chapter 15, Jesus knows that the disciples are facing an uncertain future. Uh, Jesus' mission on earth is coming to a close. Jesus was in preparation for uh, his betrayal, his arrest, his execution, the resurrection and ascension. And Jesus is preparing the disciples for the difficulties that lie ahead by encouraging them to stay connected to him in uncertain times. Jesus said in John 15, I am the true grapevine and my father is the gardener. 
He cuts off every branch of mine that doesn't produce fruit, and he prunes the branches that do bear fruit so that they will produce even more. You have already been pruned and purified by the message I have given you. Remain in me, and I will remain in you. For a branch cannot produce fruit if it is severed from the vine, and you cannot be fruitful unless you remain in me. You know, Jesus uses this analogy of a garden, a garden and a gardener. And the gardener is tending his vineyard to describe the work of God in our lives. In this object lesson, God is the gardener working to maximize the fruitfulness of the vine. And we ourselves are the vine. And Jesus teaches us some really important principles that we're going to cover today. First of all, God designed you to be fruitful and productive. That's our purpose, to be fruitful and productive. Uh, there are three things that the gardener does in this passage of Scripture. He cuts off dead vines. He trims branches. And the net result of that painful process of pruning and trimming and cutting is an increase in fruitfulness and productivity. Jesus described the work of God in our lives to the disciples and to us. And look what happened to Peter and the disciples during the next few weeks of their lives. Soon after this lesson, on the night of the Last Supper, Judas betrayed Jesus for money. Peter tries to protect Jesus his own way with a sword. Eventually, Peter and the disciples all abandon Jesus for self-interest to save themselves. And we see that in the events after Jesus' lesson, that God cuts off greed in Judas. He cuts off Peter's sense of self-sufficiency. Their sense of self-interest is exposed. And after the resurrection, God even exposes the disciples' fear and unbelief. Jesus appeared in the room where the disciples were hiding in fear. And Jesus directly confronted their fear by saying, Peace be with you. Thomas' doubt was directly addressed with the evidence of the resurrection, his own body. Jesus' description of the work of the gardener to cut and trim the vine in order to make it more fruitful and more productive is exactly what takes place in the days and weeks ahead in the lives of the disciples. I think it's an important lesson for us at this point of history here in Surabaya, that through these crisis moments in the lives of the disciples, God exposed greed, self-interest, self-sufficiency outside of God, fear, doubt. You know, all these things are exposed, cut, and trimmed off during the disciples' time of crisis. I believe that we're at the threshold of God doing the same for us as well. As a result of the trimming and the cutting of God through these crisis events in the disciples' lives, they literally went from fear and self-interest to establishing and leading a movement that they would eventually die for. They established what has become a global church in the modern day, 2,000 years later, that will last until Jesus' promised return. You know, how does Jesus' story about the gardener and the vine relate to us today? Well, we can take a number of lessons from the example of the disciples' experience. First of all, God will cut, trim, and produce fruit in our lives through times of crisis. You know, verse 2 says that God cuts off branches of our lives that do not produce fruit. And one of the things that we observe is that the vine itself has a very limited perception of what's going on around him or what's going around itself. Only the gardener sees clearly to know what needs to be cut, what needs to be trimmed in order to produce fruit. Perhaps we have understood this principle of growth, but now we are experiencing the trimming and the cutting in real life. I think many of us are feeling the cut of God's work in our lives in these days and weeks ahead. We need to prepare for it. Trust the gardener, Jesus, 
to do his perfect work in our lives. You know, we must trust and submit to the gardener to be increasingly productive and fruitful. The vine doesn't tell the gardener what to do in order to make it fruitful. The gardener is the one with the perspective and the expertise necessary to make us fruitful. God is the one with the perspective and the expertise to make your life productive and fruitful. Don't fight the cutting and trimming work of God in your life during this time of crisis. Let's ask that introspective question. What does God see in my life that needs to be cut off? A follow-on question may be this, what is it in my life that needs to be trimmed in order for me to be more productive? You know, there's nothing like time on our hands and the reality of our own mortality to give us the opportunity to think about the values, the direction, and the meaning of our lives. During this time of solitude and connection to Jesus, invite the cutting and the trimming work of God in your life. You know, we don't mean to minimize the pain of the cutting and the trimming in our lives. There is no version of cutting and trimming without experiencing the pain of the cut. And what I'm saying is that we must trust that God knows what he's doing that he has our best interest in mind and that the end result of the trimming and the cutting is better. Don't fear the work of God, invite it. What are some examples of things that may need to be cut out of our lives? You know, the Apostle Paul writing in Galatians chapter five helps define some of the dead vines that can infect and strangle and kill our connection to Jesus. Galatians 5, 19, he writes, When you follow the desires of your sinful nature, the results are very clear. Sexual immorality, impurity, lustful pleasures, idolatry, sorcery, hostility, quarreling, jealousy, outbursts of anger, selfish ambition, dissension, division, envy, drunkenness, wild parties, and other sins like these. Let me tell you again, as I have before, that anyone living that sort of life will not inherit the kingdom of God. I think we need God to cut off those sinful desires so that we can thrive and grow in our lives. If we do not bear fruit or we resist the work of the gardener, Jesus said we are useless to God. In John chapter 15, verse 6, Jesus says, Anyone who does not remain in me is thrown away like a useless branch and withers. Such branches are gathered into a pile to be burned. You know, during this time of solitude, don't be surprised when God confronts our sinful nature. Don't be surprised. And don't be afraid of it either. But know this. God will not hesitate to confront the sin in our lives. God's cutting serves to remove what is dead in us. It's for our good. God's trimming recognizes the life that is productive and fruitful. But the gardener looks at it and says, well, this is good, but it can be better and I have a better plan. And perhaps there are things in our lives that put a drag on our productivity. It doesn't mean necessarily that we're living in sin, but perhaps over the course of life, we have these things that kind of latch on to us that are dragging us, that are putting a drag on the work of God in our lives. So God trims and trains and shapes us to be increasingly fruitful. Well, how does God trim our lives to make us increasingly fruitful? You know, sometimes God uses trials and suffering to trim our lives of unnecessary things. You may be confined to your home with the most difficult people in your life, your own family. This may be a time of trimming in your life. There is no way to hide from the drag of a dysfunctional relationship when you're all locked in the same house. 
God often uses difficult people to train, to trim, and to shape our lives. Perhaps God will use a physical limitation or a weakness in our ability. God can use these things to trim our lives of things like pride and self-reliance without God, to produce the understanding of what it is to experience the grace of God. You know, God can trim us through scarcity to teach us to trust God for provision and to not idolize things over Him. To teach us to handle money in a way that honors God. You know, past failures God uses to shape and prepare us and to trim our lives for future opportunities and productivity. Other things that God might need to trim out of our lives include unresolved conflict. Now is the time to address un unresolved conflict and unforgiveness and bitterness and disappointment with people. Perhaps to confront the pride that doesn't allow for the acceptance of criticism or even correction. Resentment because you are not getting from God what you feel like you're entitled to. Or perhaps guilt over something you did long ago. Unrealistic expectations that you're putting on others or yourself. Perhaps perfectionism that you can never live up to, but you always feel guilty for it. Perhaps your negative self-image is robbing you of life. You know, some of these things are dead weight that have attached to our lives. And this is the time where God can trim those things and keep them from robbing you of forward momentum and productivity. You know, I want to say expect that God is wanting to cut and trim some things in your life during this time of isolation and hopefully deepening connection to Jesus and to others. Trust the gardener. His plan for your life is not only good, it is increasingly fruitful and joyful. You know, there's some huge benefits to people who let the gardener do his work in their lives. Jesus in John 15 verse 5 said, Yes, I am the vine and you are the branches. Those who remain in me and I in them will produce much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. So what is Jesus talking about when he says fruit? You know, if I read this like a Surabayan, I might interpret this to be financial success, wealth, security. But is that what the scripture is really talking about? No, it's not. In John chapter 15, connection to Jesus brings other benefits, better benefits. First of all, connection to Jesus means that God is working in my life for my good. It's what Jesus is talking about when he's talking about the process of cutting and trimming in verse two. Connection to Jesus brings purpose to our lives. And perhaps you're out there and you're watching this and you're looking for purpose and meaning. I want you to know connection to Jesus provides what you're looking for. Connection to Jesus provides access to God in verse 7. Connection to Jesus means that we experience the love of God. And I know that there's a many people here in Surabaya and around the world that are looking to experience a love that is unconditional, that is lasting. Connection with Jesus brings joy. And look, when you read the headlines right now, there's not a lot of joy. It's fear, it's anxiety, it's everything other than joy. Right now, we need a connection to Jesus because we need joy. And finally, connection with Jesus means that we experience friendship with God. You know, sometimes we end up in life feeling like we're all alone, but verse 14 talks about that when we have this connection to Jesus, we have friendship with God. Galatians provides further definition to the kind of fruit that God is looking to produce in our lives. And this time of uncertainty is a great time for it to happen. But Galatians chapter 5 verse 22, But the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love, joy, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. 
There is no law against these things. Look, understand this. If we're all going to be locked in our homes with our families, we can use all of these fruits. Not tomorrow. We can use them today because we can't get away from each other. We need the fruit of the Spirit to be functioning in our lives in these uncertain times. This last week, Pastor Anthony and Casey, along with Pastor Roy and Lydia, uh, along with a team of volunteers from ICA Social Ministry, they gathered resources and supplies to demonstrate the fruit of the Spirit. A little bit of joy, a little bit of kindness, and a little bit of goodness. And while others were crowding the supermarkets, a group of ICAers were preparing some baco and cleaning supplies and personal hygiene items and delivered them to the needy members of the Sambisari community. I say, this is what happens when the gardener cuts and prunes in our lives. Jesus gives us purpose and opportunities to shine in these difficult times. I want to encourage you, stay connected to Jesus Stay connected to each other. And as we close, one final thought. Jesus says in John 15, verse 9, I have loved you even as the Father has loved me. Remain in my love. This is what Jesus asks for as the disciples are facing this time of insecurity. Well, how do I make that connection to Jesus? How do I remain in Jesus? Well, there's a couple things. Number one, believe in Jesus. Accept him as your Lord and Savior of your own life. Ask God for forgiveness for the mistakes that you've made in this life. Live for God by doing what he says in the word of God is the best place to find out what God says to humanity. Make it a habit to read that word. Find and become a part of a church where people love Jesus. And I would just suggest that if you live in Surabaya and you're not going to any church, I want to encourage you to contact us here or connect with us through the email on your screen. We would love to connect with you as soon as we could. Let's pray together. Lord Jesus, this morning we just thank you for your word. We thank you for the work of the gardener in the lives of his people. Lord, we are that vine. Like the disciples, we are facing uncertain times. And Lord, we know that in spite of the uncertainty, God, your plan for us is good. And God, I pray that you would do the work of cutting in our lives during this time. Would you do the work of trimming in our lives so that the dead things would fall off and the things that are causing a drag on our productivity, that they would be dealt with and disposed of, Lord, that we would become increasingly productive in a world where people are living in fear. May we experience the productivity and the joy of God and connection with you. Lord, I pray your blessing upon your people. I pray for your provision upon their businesses and their employees. Lord, I pray for wisdom, God, for health workers. Lord, for those that are going to the grocery store and stocking shelves, for those that are driving trucks and delivering goods, for those that are you know, showing up to run the internet and keep our phones running. Lord, I pray for all of those people, doctors, Lord, that are on the front line and our government officials that are making important decisions. Lord, I pray for wisdom for all of them. Lord, I pray for those that are worried about their supply, worried about provision, that God, as they have honored you previously, Lord, we have always said that you side with faith. God, may this be the day that that becomes a reality. Would you provide for our people, Lord? God, we just give your blessing to your people this morning, and we ask for your hand and your protection to be upon them. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. I'm going to ask that you just raise your hands for those of you who are not part of our normal worship service. You know, at the very end, we give what we call a pastoral blessing uh, in the benediction. So I'm going to read you this passage from Romans chapter 5 and just kind of speak this as a blessing and a prayer over your life. It says this, We can rejoice, too, when we run into problems and trials. 
for we know that they help us develop endurance and endurance develops strength of character and character strengthens our confident hope of salvation. And this hope will not lead to disappointment for we know how dearly God loves us because he has given us the Holy Spirit to fill our hearts with his love. May the blessing of God and the word of God be real in your life this next week. We love you guys. We look forward to meeting with you soon in real life, in the same place. And God bless you this morning in Jesus' name. Amen. I don't want to be on my phone, but I can't be alone. Walking through the mighty wind. I'm trying to be somebody I'm not, but it's not what I want. And tell me there's another way. All of the lights are chased and not faded. All the cheap feels were only time wasted. Tell me why society's plan should define who I am. Surely there's a higher one.
see me wherever I go Yeah. Oh. Caught up in the rhythm